A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Any given year, most people will have lived through or heard of a community that was devastated by natural disaster. But what if poor human decisions are mostly responsible for the challenges faced by communities in the aftermath of devastation, such as broken infrastructure or public health issues? Sarah Thunberg is an emergency manager with more than a decade of public health and emergency management experience. Sarah argues that there are ways in which disasters are preventable and believes that using data can help us protect ourselves against the next great catastrophe. In August 2017, Hurricane Harvey devastated communities across Texas and Louisiana, and more than 36 people died. We watched rapt. Our hearts broke for those who lost everything and soared with pride at the sight of the spontaneous volunteers, our Cajun Navy, who deputized themselves and their fishing boats to rescue stranded survivors. Unprecedented, we said. Unforeseen. A terrible act of God. One of the worst natural disasters in U.S. history. But you know what? I don't agree. And across all of that, all of that experience, the key thing I learned is that nearly all of the trauma and tragedy we call natural disaster is not only predictable, it's preventable. To show you what I mean, let's take a deeper look at Houston and Harvey. Houston is the largest U.S. city with no formal zoning. And between the late 90s and Harvey, it was also one of the fastest growing. And with all of those people came the need for housing. Houston accommodated by paving over more than 30% of the wetland and prairie and trading naturally absorbent land for impervious houses, driveways, and roads has consequences. Rainwater can't rapidly absorb and so instead it funnels, collects, and floods. More than a decade before Harvey, the report mapped locations in Houston that would experience catastrophic flooding and significant rain events. But developers, together with city officials, willfully disregarded that known risk. They traded short-term financial gains for the long-term safety of future residents. The disaster data illuminates another heartbreaking reality. Because disasters are not natural, but a result of human decision-making, the same systemic inequities that exist in our community every day are magnified in disaster. Disasters do not distribute their wrath equally. Historically marginalized communities suffer disproportionately through redlining and by placing affordable housing in high-risk geographies like the Lower Ninth Ward in New Orleans or the Far Rockaways in Queens, we've created a system where brown, black, disabled, and poor people are far more likely to have their lives and livelihoods washed away. And the super-rich, like Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, hire private firefighters to protect their homes, while the rest of us depend on a public firefighting force that is 69% volunteers. Those Northern California wildfires are another example of our failure to use data. Medicare data available to emergency managers identifies people who have daily in-home health care. Other data identifies people who have a hearing impairment. Websites show us where their spotty cell phone signal 
and public-facing notification plans tell us that in an emergency, evacuation orders will be issued via text message and that police will drive through neighborhoods announcing evacuation from their bullhorns. We don't yet know how to be fully disaster-proof, of course. But we can do a hell of a lot better than we do today. And one of the key ways is by investing in mitigation. Projects like raising the electrical equipment in high-rise buildings or hospitals from the basement to upper floors, or by clearing brush from around houses or installing flame-resistant roofs, or even by increasing the drainage adjacent to roads not sexy at all. It's not nearly as sexy as the dramatic rescues we see on the news, but these projects save lives and huge amounts of money. Sure, a project in Reedsburg, Wisconsin to raise telecommunications equipment just four feet higher sounds super boring, but that $235,000 project is going to save $2.2 million dollars by avoiding losses from flood. For every dollar we invest in mitigation, we save at least six in disaster response and recovery costs. But Portland is taking action. City agencies, together with community members, are planting and nurturing trees. Not only are they beautiful, they reduce urban heat and absorb air pollution and reduce the risk of dying from a heat wave. Here's the bottom line. Calling wildfires, heat waves, hurricanes and flood, natural disasters, obfuscates our human responsibility. It lets us off the hook for the death and destruction. It might feel awkward for a while, but let's call them human disasters. And let's also stop behaving as if we're powerless against their consequences. We know how to stop the suffering. We have the data. We just need to use it to create policy that prioritizes mitigation, to stop building houses in areas we know are dangerous, and to take protective action against climate change now, before it's too late. We have the power to save lives, and we must use it. Sarah Thunberg has been working all over the world on disaster relief for nearly two decades. She currently leads the state of Colorado's coronavirus innovation response team. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Denver, Colorado. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Mile High. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.